So one of the questions that a lot of people have is, will fasting slow down or speed up their metabolism? So, and will it make you look like you have cheek injections? Yes. Well, that, dude, I mean, are these things real? I don't know, dude. They, Possibly I could have lost some fat in my face so my bones show, but that just could be me. I thought you are a dude. You're a woman now? You know, I've been getting some cheek filler behind the scenes. That's where all the money's going. I know. I, I know. Okay. The reason why we're poking fun here is uh, one of the videos that Deanna and I recently did that I'll post here is but some of the men gave Deanna a lot of flack. So we're going to infuse a little sarcasm here. Deanna is really a woman. Trust me, I know. I've seen her. I think last time I checked my private parts, I'm still a, a woman. You don't yet have a penis. Don't have a penis yet. But you're working on growing one. Working on growing it. Is it? How's that working out? it's kind of tough it's it's hard at 43 so, to grow it's a little penis. bit tough yes and i uh, <laughs> i i'm still attracted to you mike i'm not you know looking you're, at women you're, but just you're yet. looking kind of manly i, I mean people manly. are calling me yeah. i'm just kidding all right let's get to the topic at hand we're going to talk about metabolism <laughs> friends sorry you know what um as, as like a family business we see the comments and uh, we just got to poke fun at it but a lot of you have questions about how will fasting and a compressed feeding window affect my metabolic rate? And so we have title, we have the calories here. We really should have metabolic rate. Look at what, you know, I think it's kind of an old paradigm, Deanna, mm -hmm. and everyone, you know, a lot of people kind of view their metabolism kind of like we view a car's engine. It's mm -hmm. either slow or fast. Right. Well, guess what? I'm going to, um, maybe I'll give, because your handwriting is much better than mine. Maybe we can he put here, um, you know, how to improve like an arrow up, Here's one surefire way to rev up your metabolism. So draw an arrow up, okay, okay and equals gain weight. You're like, whoa, wait, 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 Mike, Mike. I already want to lose weight, and you're telling me if I want to improve my resting metabolic rate, I should gain weight. Yeah, so, so studies clearly show that the more heavy someone is, whether you're gaining weight for bodybuilding, whether you're gaining fat unintentionally, mm -hmm. it speeds up your metabolic rate. You're like, well, wait, but I don't want that. Like, hold on. How? Th this was a surprising fact, and I, pu I published this in the book Belly Fat Effect that I published back in 2014. So th th this has been known for a long time. So I think we need to rephrase the notion in our head, should we have a fast metabolic engine or a slow metabolic engine? That's mm -hmm. been way oversimplified. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is burn body fat, right? Right. I mean, that's kind of the ultimate goal. <laughs> you, you know, having a fast metabolic rate doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to burn body fat. So Deanna weighs 119 pounds, right? If I were to force feed Deanna and instead of having her do one meal a day, mm -hmm. if I had her, you know, a pre-contest coach or something said, all right, we're going to put 20 pounds on you, Deanna, her resting metabolic rate would be faster, right. but she would probably have more body fat fat. Mm -hmm. So again, Such a good I just want you, everyone to just, sometimes in nutrition and in life, we have to reframe how we think about things. Okay. And you know, sometimes we've made bad analogies like a fast metabolism, fast car and all that. Yeah. Um, so likewise, one way to slow down your resting metabolic rate, and I'm not saying this is bad, is to lose weight. Mm -hmm. This naturally happens when you lose weight, when you lose body fat your resting metabolic rate will go down. It's mm -hmm. called adaptive thermogenesis. And so this is one of the reasons why Dan and I, uh, we talk about this on this channel, is to try to keep our body weight, let's not have the ebbs and flows. Let's, unless you're a, a bodybuilder that's, or a fitness model that's getting paid to go on stage and you need to bulk in the off season, it makes sense to just slowly get down to your ideal body weight mm -hmm. and try to stay there and right. maintain that so there's not the peaks and troughs. Right. And so we don't have the adaptive thermogenesis. So, mm -hmm. um, Deanna, maybe we can talk about um, a down arrow and talk about some of the way we'll just kind of, you know, write it. And you might want to use the fat part of the marker oh, so sorry. that it's, uh, there you go. yeah, there you go. Um, and we have a black one here too if we, if we do need that. That black one's not working very well, but. So. One way to slow down fat loss and to slow down your resting metabolic rate is to fast for prolonged periods of time mm -hmm. very frequently. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this is a natural compensation, compensatory mechanism of your body. Free T3 is gonna decline after 72 hours of prolonged fasting. Mm -hmm. So 
Pro, I'm not saying intermittent fasting or a time restricted feeding like what Deanna does one meal Short a day. Short term, 22 hours is not a long fast. It's not going to dramatically no. increase reverse T3. Yeah. But if you were to fast for three days, it mm -hmm. would. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where it gets interesting. A lot of people are so concerned because they have Hashimoto's. They're concerned about their thyroid. Right. But yet they want to get the health benefits of autophagy. Mm -hmm. So you're like, well, you, you, I mean, look. If you're going to fast periodically, I do recommend this once a fiscal quarter. Mm -hmm. We do a 72 hour fast, mm -hmm. okay? Just salt, Redmond Real Salt. I'm not being paid to wear this. I just like the brand. They send us salt. We love, I mean, we, we have tons of salt on our food, so <laughs> water. If you sauna, if you exercise, you need real salt. Right. Um, but I understand that when I fast for 72 hours, I'm gonna get a little cold. Mm -hmm. I might get constipated. Mm -hmm. I will express symptoms of hypothyroidism but then upon refeeding, that's gonna go away. So we can put one way to reduce your metabolism is prolonged fasting, if you wanna write that. Okay. And then I'll, I'll just keep going here. So you can reduce your resting metabolic rate through prolonged fasting, through losing body fat. Now again, there's health benefits for certain individuals to prolong fasting periodically. Mm -hmm. There's health benefits to losing body fat. Mm -hmm. So then we, we can't really always say, well, you know, lowering my resting metabolic rate is bad. Does that make sense? Exactly. Yes. So absolutely. we need to rethink this and think mm -hmm. about, well, why am I concerned about losing, you know, what are my goals, right? Mm -hmm. Why am I concerned about lowering my resting metabolic rate? And what are some ways that I can kind of mitigate that? And I think right. one thing that Deanna does, and this is what I personally do, is not having the same amount of calories and cycling them every single day and we show this in a book that's coming on omad we show how to cycle calories and i'm talking some days deficit some days surplus it can be based on the type of workout you're doing or activity for example if you're traveling little deficits fine okay so that's the problem with counting macros to the t every single day and letting that dictate your metabolism, that's just not possible. Your body is innately very smart and it's gonna do its thing. It's gonna to try to keep you balanced no matter what. So a way to kind of trick that is to consciously add a surplus in a day. And I'm not talking like cheat meal with tons of carbs unless that's your thing. It can be done with fat, it can be done with protein, and it can be done with just adding like two to 300 calories in. It could be like a small dessert. It doesn't have to be something extreme. Yeah, and, and what I do recommend is, uh, you know, this is just a natural, intuitive way to think about this. Mm -hmm. On days where you're exerting more physical activity, hiking, walking, gardening, weightlifting, as we, we like to recommend and we personally do, yeah. then that's the day where you can throw in more calories, maybe right. throw in an additional meal. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I don't, I know people kind of know the research on these refeeding periods much better than I, but uh, we like our body weight has maintained. I mean, if you look at, past this channel, Dan and I have Pretty done many videos. Pretty consistent, right? Eating for the season. past four or yeah. five years, yeah, right. there hasn't been these massive swings. Maybe two or three pounds here and there. Yeah. Um, like if I'm gearing up for a powerlifting competition, I might look a little bit heavier, but I'm only like 187 pounds right now. I'm like 185, so mm -hmm. it's not a whole lot. And so mm -hmm. we found that again, just like having that flexibility mentally. Mm -hmm that you, you know, you're not stuck on some calorie number. Right. Because, you know, it's ironic. The people that our clients, our mutual clients, Deanna and I share, uh, just the one-off direct messages, the people that tell me they've been struggling with body composition issues are the ones that have been like, I've been following 1,400 calories a day. I've been doing right. this, and it's not working. The one, they're the people that are like looking at this like a, an Excel spreadsheet. Like I'm doing they, a strict keto and, and my weight's still fluctuating and it's just too much. I mean, having like a baseline is good, but it's just gonna cause stress and cortisol, which is unnatural. It's gonna cause stress, which is gonna cause inflammation, which doesn't matter what you're eating, if you're inflamed, you're not gonna burn fat. And if we think about this from a evolutionary or teleological perspective, humans and any animal for that matter, outside of, I mean, I know in 2019 where you have Amazon Prime and refrigerators and freezers, you're, you're eating the same meals, the same time, the same day. Yeah. That has never occurred before in evolutionary history of humankind right. before the advent of the, the electricity refrigerator and the freezer. Okay. So we need to think, think that, you know, the human body, a little ebb and flow, a little 
th that's built in uh, in terms of food availability and food intake uh, is built in and hardwired into our epigenetics and DNA, yep. right? And I know people are like, "Whoa, why would you want to eat like your ancestors? They only died to thirty five. They died before the age of thirty five." Look, I get it. <laughs> But there's an unindustrialized people living in the world right now in Tanzania, parts of Siberia, and anthropologists and, and scientists are researching them, and they find that calorie intake fluctuates. It uh, does. They, it does. And sorry to interrupt you, Mike, but I um, had a great example last night. So I showed on Instagram um, a meal that I had, which was pretty carnivore, and I had many people freaking out, oh, Deanna, are you now carnivore? Like, you're confusing me. And I thought... I thought you were keto. <laughs> I thought you were keto yesterday. Well, I was keto <laughs> but you the following plants, day. You know, so, and tonight could be plant-based. I'm not sure. So it just depends on what seasonal avail uh, seasonally available in our gardens, what's in our fridge. We keep variety um, enough in our fridge, but not enough where we're, we have too much variety because that can be a bad thing too. So it's just being sustainable with food and eating locally, seasonally when possible. And yeah, we have, you know, avocados here and there, but it doesn't mean you have to have an avocado every single day, nor, you know, an eight ounce ribeye steak every single day. Switching it up is probably more normal than having the same thing every single day. Yeah, you're not your diet. Okay. It's right. great if you identify with a certain diet and you can form friends around that and social connections and, and maybe you know online groups, but you are more than your diet. You're a unique individual. Right. And it, it, it makes sense just from, again, an evolutionary standpoint, from an eating seasonally standpoint, eating locally standpoint, uh, blueberries are never in season 24-7 in any region in the world it, right. outside of an artificial environment where there's plastic and induced heat. Right. The same thing with meat, guys. We love meat. We eat meat. But there are certain times of the year, like as we get into late summer, when cows aren't even being harvested yet, you're eating frozen meat. That's right. where you should probably have more fish well, yeah. and more, more other things. So mm -hmm. you're more than your diet. Yeah. Just because you eat carnivore-ish doesn't mean that if you have a one-off piece of vegetable or plant matter, your whole life is going to fall apart. Now, if you have celiac, Hashimoto's, uh, you know, a lot of autoimmune predisposition, then that's where things can be a little bit different. But right. it, uh, long story short, um, to summarize this this video, you know, because I want to keep these videos a little bit on the short end, um, is we want to have a little bit of flexibility right. in our ideology mm -hmm. and not be dogmatic about certain things. Yeah. Uh, I think there's there's a lot to be said about variation, and you know, if we, one parallel that I like to make, and maybe it's it's a bad analogy. I could be wrong on this, but you never want to do the same exercise for the same sets and the same duration and the same weight when you go to the gym. Um, there's natural adaptations. Your muscles, your central nervous system adapts. Mm -hmm. You know, if I max out on squat every time I lift legs two days a week, I'm gonna have a sore back. Like I, I, my accessory muscles are not gonna be good. I, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna, I might get gains, you know, initially, but then they're gonna diminish. Right. And so I think it's good to take that paradigm, that idea that our overall metabolism, our GI tract, it's, it's adapting in real time. I think the, the constant thing, the only constant thing we should have is really just the real food component. Um, you know, we're not saying eat real food one day and then eat processed junk food the next. Like real foods ultimately, yes, be consistent with real food in season if possible. It's more just the variety and the macronutrients, right? So we're not telling you to be carnivore, keto, plant-based. Whatever works for you works for you. Um, it's just stick to real food and that'll probably hit, get you to hit your goals a lot quicker than going out to eat or, you know, eating fast food and processed foods. Hopefully that helps a little bit. I know we covered a lot of different, you know, we, when we start these videos, the goal is to like hit a topic and then we start talking about other things. So hopefully mm -hmm. you enjoyed the, this content friends. If you did, you can hit that like button. If you're mm -hmm. not yet subscribed, please do so, so you get updated when we launch new videos like this and expert interviews with folks like Dr. Kim Berry, Peter Tia, and much more. Mm -hmm. We'll catch you on the next video. And as always, we do follow the comments, positive and or negative, below. <laughs> so uh, we would love to know what works for you. That's how we learn, and that's how other people learn as well. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.